right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Geek Garage podcast. I am David Dess, all your host, and with me is uh, basically a full house of just a shit ton of people, and I am super excited. We're going to be talking about Avengers Endgame. It's a small movie. It's doing okay at the box office. I- I've heard. I, I mean, mean, the numbers. It's holding on. It, yeah. uh, it's, yeah. it's holding on uh, with a two billion two. dollar right. as of earlier today. Put it in perspective of how successful this movie is, the number two movie at the box office this weekend made four million dollars. Yeah. So it's everyone is seeing this movie. If you haven't seen this movie right now, I want to go ahead and we do we want to say spoiler warning or is it just yes? Be kind of like uh, one usually of those? that that comes after the uh, the guest introduction. But we can go ahead and we're spoiling, uh, the, guest we're spoiling the guest introduction. <laughs> right. so spoiler alert for the guest introductions. Yeah, um, but no, we'll uh, definitely spoiler alert. We'll we'll make that clear here in in just a minute. But I want to uh, go ahead and introduce our guest for today. Um, guest number one is my wife Lindsay. Hey, honey. Hey. How's it going? Pretty good. I like that you waved. <laughs> the, the wave was fantastic. It's all right, you know. And uh, it it might take uh, everyone a second to, like, get to say hi because we're having to share mics uh, because this is a very professional setup. So, yeah. Um, anyways, uh, next in line is uh, my good buddy, Jeremiah. How are you, buddy? I'm good. Yeah. How are you? Good. Excellent. Um, thank you so much for coming down. It is your first official time uh, on the podcast as well. On a podcast. Uh, a podcast in general? Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad I could uh, pop your podcast cherry. If it, if it hurts, just lay back and think of flowers. Just relax. Right. Just yeah. Relax. Just look at the flowers. <laughs> Ted is back again. What's up, buddy? Hey, buddy. How he, you doing? He, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm not excited that you're here, though. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ted is here to be our counterweight. Yes. Um, Literally. That's not a fat joke. It, it is. <laughs> Although it could be. Right. It, this is the first time I've made that kind of joke, and you haven't responded a fat joke. How gauche. It's pronounced gauche. Well, you actually. know what? <laughs> Fuck you, all right? Uh, and then finally, we have uh, my good buddy, Jeff Breedwell. How are you? Hi, hi. How are you, man? It's good to be here. Yes. Um, you are also new to the podcast. I am. And yeah. um, super excited uh, to have you on as well. Um, I've been looking forward to this for a very long time. Yes. And I wanted to make sure that we had you on at the most appropriate episode uh, to also pop your Geek Garage podcast chair. Oh, my And yes. I felt like this would be the best one to, to do that with. So thank you so much for taking the time to come on. Absolutely. This film, uh, the culmination of so many good ones. Ted, I already know you're going to say mediocre, but still it's good to watch all this stuff happen. I can't wait. I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. So... Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll go ahead and get into it. Of course, spoiler warning, spoiler alerts ahead. So uh, we'll for for the most part, this podcast is going to be very loosely structured. We we do have some talking points. However, the only thing set in stone that we are doing is right off the bat, everyone's going to take just a few minutes and give like their initial thoughts, feelings, um, as far as you know, broad strokes, finite details, <laughs> uh, good and bad. Uh, anything that they want to do, uh, want to talk about. We did this for the Infinity War episode, um, and I thought it worked out really well because it let people discuss what they thought without um, being interrupted, which, you know, it, it turned out to be, you know, a really good format for uh, starting the podcast off and then opened it up to kind of open discussion. So that's what we're going to do. And we put numbers into my shame hat. Uh, it's a shame hat because I am bald uh, and I wear it because I am shameful. So, um, whatever. Uh, <laughs> and um, I believe, Jeremiah, you got number one, right? I was lucky number one, yeah. Cool. Uh, so, would you like to start us out with your thoughts and feelings overall in general about Avengers Endgame? Yeah, definitely. So, um, right off the bat, overall, you know, I, I, I'm going to say I love the movie. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> Um, Ted is the only one that uh, he is the he is out of the zeitgeist here. Your reckoning will come. <laughs> <laughs> will it? We'll, we'll, we'll see. Okay. Yeah. So, um, no, I, I love the movie. Um, so I, I have seen it twice now. Okay. Um, you just came from it, right? Isn't I, I that what just, you said? I like, just literally. left the theater, came here, sat down, and now we're doing this. Um, okay. The second experience watching the movie was much better than the first. Um, okay. So first, I, I, I've told David about this, but my first experience, I unknowingly went into a 4D showing. That's right. Of the movie. 
Which I, I didn't get. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Did the <clears throat> seats move? Like oh, it, it was like seats moved. Uh, air blows on you from like in front and behind you, and also mist is present. Is this something that you paid to experience? <laughs> no, it was. So I, I got on Fandango, um, sponsored by Fandango, <laughs> and not uh, quite there we're, yet. We're not, not quite there. Yet. We're not. You so have to have we, thousands of listeners in order for that to happen. And, and so far, are, the whole, like, no interruptions thing is going great. So well, yeah, that's I mean, partially it, my it, fault. It's, it's cool. It's cool. Um, but, yeah, so I purchased my 3D tickets. We went to the theater. Uh, my wife and I walked in, and I thought, man, these seats look really weird. Surely there's it's just something weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, we sit down. We're watching the trailers. No big deal. And then all of a sudden... It comes on the screen. It's like, this is a 4D theater experience. Right. I feel and like nobody knows what four dimensions is because I assure you, it's not <laughs> misting your face. It Well, apparently, collectively, it's your seat moving. It's not. Air it's and really mist. not. I cannot stress it enough that that is incorrect. Yeah, it, it, was, it was just an awkward experience. And going into it unknowingly made it just that much worse. Right. And so for a three-hour and, what, two-minute movie mm-hmm. that is an action movie... Uh, I was literally sore uh, yeah. leaving the theater. My legs just were destroyed. I had a three-hour leg workout. Oh, oh. That, oh, that sounds like a really bad amusement park ride. It was. Like, you were stuck <laughs> on. That's it was. Like, wow. So the movie, watching the movie, amazing. I loved it. That experience, uh, I'm not afraid to admit, I cried like a baby uh, many times. Mm-hmm. Um, and on the second time, I even sat next to this, you know, Big burly guy that I had no idea who it was. Not Ted. Um, and big burly dudes have feelings too. Cried again, and um, you know today was a stationary seat, which was much better. Uh, I reclined; it was really nice. I had my, my I had my beverage, my nice. popcorn, my candy, and thoroughly enjoyed it. Nice. Um, so, you know, culmination of twenty two movies that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I think for the most part pays off really well. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, like I, I mean, I'll I'll let you know now. Like I have like a few things uh, <laughs> in in my like interruption free time. So if you want to like actually get into certain things that you liked or did not like mm-hmm. about the movie, like right now, that would also be perfect. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, so uh, I thought the so let's just jump right in. I yes. guess to the spoilers. Uh, the, yeah. Yep. Uh, culmination of the star uh, stark storyline arc mm-hmm. i thought was was really good um i was i expected more people to die to be honest yeah uh, but you know i was overall happy with with the way things ended um i've got pages of notes that you know i i, I just jotted down anything and everything that i could think of um thor was, was a delight throughout mm-hmm. the movie uh, um, you know, looking at the second viewing today uh, and thinking about our, our discussions of, you know, one of the things of who's the MVP. Mm. Um, I struggled with that a little bit thinking about it ahead of time. But then upon watching the second viewing, uh, the rat that is in the van. Motherfucker, I, I have glory? the rat <laughs> as my MVP. I, but I, I honestly, I'm not mad. I'm just glad that someone else like had that. I, I was thinking about it ahead of time. I'm like, oh man, would it, who would it be? Like, oh Natasha, like sacrifices herself. Spoiler, um, you know Tony, blah 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 blah. But then I was, I'm watching. I'm like, you know what? If that rat had not hit that <laughs> right that panel just right, right, you know, none of this would have would have happened because nobody else was thinking. Hey, what if we go back in time? Right. So, yeah. Um, no, that's that's exactly right. Yeah, so that that's what I'm I'm calling my MVP right there, the the rat in the van. <laughs> is that is it. that is that is very accurate. Ah, <laughs> fucking terrible. But, uh, um, yeah. So other parts of the the movie that I thought were were you know were were good. So seeing the th- the first time I saw it was with my wife. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, her, her her being who she is, the 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 woman power, right. girl power moment. Mm-hmm. You know. She cheered and, and got all excited. Yeah. Um, you know, during the, the big battle at the end. Obviously Cap using the hammer yeah. was was phenomenal. I, I cheered loudly yes. yeah. seeing that. Yeah. Um your uh overall theater experience like with the people that you were surrounded mm-hmm. with, um, how did it compare from last week to this week? Because I know usually when you go to the movies mm-hmm. 
it's very crowded the first time you go and then when you go the second time t- uh, you know depending on when mm-hmm. you go it, it typically it's it's less full than right. the first time so uh it, it i i I expect that level, same level of enthusiasm from mm-hmm. the first time around, and it's not there. And I'm like, "What the hell is wrong with you people?" <laughs> so I'm curious to yeah, to just, know what what it was like uh, a week later after. It yeah. Came so out. the the first time, I mean, it, the the first viewing, it was packed. Right. Right. Um, and you know, you you feel it. So like I said, when when Cap has the hammer, like I cheered. Every, mm-hmm. You know, there were several people that I see hands in the air right. cheering. I knew it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then, um, you know, just a, a lot of moments like that. Mm-hmm. And, and then, you know, I was mindful of that going into the second time, which was still fairly packed. Yeah. Um, you know, it wasn't a sold out show, but it was pretty busy, pretty busy. Yeah, for sure. Um, and there wasn't as many of those moments. Sure. Which, you know, I would expect, obviously, you know, the first week coming out of the gates, like those are going to be the, all, all the fanboys, all the yeah, true people yeah, that want to see right, the movie. Yeah. Second week are the folks that are like, yeah, I can wait. Right. right. Uh, the the I reason why I was stuff. like curious about this particular instance is because some people literally had to wait until the second week yeah. because tickets went like crazy. Oh, yeah. Like I, I was surprised I was able to get mine. Like when I woke up, it was like seven o'clock in the morning and I just happened to see on Facebook like tickets were now available and like they released the last trailer or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I hopped on Fandango and just by chance there happened to be some. And I was like, well, I guess they're not going like, you know, going like crazy like I, I thought they would be. Mm-hmm. And a half hour later, just Facebook is blowing up by all my friends that cannot get tickets. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. well, I guess never mind then. I so I I feel like I lucked out for the first viewing <clears throat> because we waited. Um, we didn't buy, you know, advanced tickets or anything like that. Um, and I wanted to go see it Thursday. Mm-hmm. It didn't happen. I wanted to go see it Friday. And and so that, and that's the reason I did not buy tickets. Cause I knew like it may not happen on Thursday. So Friday may or may not Saturday, hopefully will ended up not happening. I ended up going on Sunday, Saturday. I'm talking with my, my family, my sister and her family, my immediate family. And we're trying to figure out, um, the, you know what we're going to do our plan for we were supposed to all go together mm-hmm. and my sister is just like so we live in Glissville, so we're going to go in hendersonville right and so we look at the theater in hendersonville and legitimately the only tickets in all of the theaters all the showings were like two seats available in the front row <laughs> and so that wasn't going to happen right. i just happened to saturday night look at opry mills mm-hmm. and found <laughs> a knowing 4d theater that was not you know the first 10 rows right and i was like I told my wife i said hey we're gonna jump on this one 11 15 sunday morning we're gonna go see this movie so that's what we did <laughs> nice <laughs> jeremiah what else you got um yeah i mean so uh, most of the other stuff that i have you know uh, i feel like we're gonna discuss in, in great length but probably um you know i am a, a huge fan of time travel mm-hmm. and paradoxes and all that good stuff so right. i was really so this excited kind of your playground I, I was excited to, to see like oh they're gonna go you know back in time right and but then like you know it was really kind of thrown off initially when you know um <laughs> scott ant-man is you know he's basing everything off of back to the future right and mm-hmm. you know tony quickly shoots that down and then of course you know later in the movie uh professor hulk right and um and they're all discussing the logic and you know they're running down all these movies that no that is just insane logic that does not work right um so it was really kind of kind of cool to see this like you know for the most part you know this divergence from pop culture time travel Mm -hmm. so it was good to it was good to see that yeah for sure yeah cool uh who had who had number two was that you honey yep there you go your turn to take over the mic (laughs) Okay, well, my, I guess my overall thoughts is that it does feel very complete. Unlike uh, Infinity War, when you left, you just, you know, you're just filled with this dread because you know you had this long wait to um, get the conclusion. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, it does feel like the end of an era, and, you know, I know they're moving forward. Um, you know, with phase four and everything, but, um, as far as our initial Avengers, 
their story is more or less told. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm pretty happy with how it went, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I think that, um, you know, how um, they played out Tony's death and everything, while I'm very sad, it felt right. Um, you know, he'll always be one of my favorite characters, but... He was a real one. Yeah. I but, mean, he, he just did that felt, character so well. Sorry to... Yeah. And, but it felt it felt right. And, you know, as soon as you saw him and Pepper and that he had a family, the second I saw that, mm-hmm. I was like, nope. He's mm-hmm. definitely toast, you know. Kept holding out hope, but nope. That one fucking sucked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, other than that, um, I was pretty, pretty okay with the rest of the movie. I have some other concerns. Um, Natasha, I definitely feel like she was the MVP because we wouldn't have had all the stones if it wasn't for her, and. I felt like she was really the only one that was being truly like selfless in her sacrifice. Granted, she didn't have a whole lot of other stuff going on, but <laughs> she did have a life. So yeah, well, I mean, her life was the team. Sure. And um, uh, the like the girl team up moments. Why I'm all about it, and I loved it. I also felt like it was a little cliche. A little fan service. Yeah, I, like I felt like. like yeah, yeah, because like, I felt like they used to do like those girl team up movies and movies a lot because they didn't want to show women fighting men, mm-hmm. so they would mm-hmm. fight each other or the girls would team up and fight the monster or whatever yeah. it is in the movie, and so it did feel a little like cliche well do you do you think so i mean it's kind of the, they they already did it though too right in, yeah in they infinity did it in war. infinity war so, so do you think if they didn't do it there and save this for the larger group like you would have been yeah more okay it may with have it? been a little better if they didn't do it in infinity war and just did it in, in game but regardless yeah. uh, i still felt like um I still felt like it wasn't entirely necessary. Like okay. I felt like they could have all been pretty awesome, like on their own and mm. pitching in however they pitched in. Uh, I did love Pepper and her rescue suit, oh, yeah. just because I love Pepper and yeah. <laughs> she's always been she's always been a fun character, and I'm always like hugely disappointed when I don't see her name like on the films. And she did kick a lot of butt in that suit. Mm-hmm. She, she did a lot of butt. She did. Um, let's see um, other than that my only other real problem was um, when they go to Titan to like finally you know go after um, Thanos and Are you they talking about Infinity War or? no I'm talking about Endgame when they chop off his head oh within oh. like the first like five minutes <laughs> yeah that, yeah that was like on... yeah that was a, it wasn't on Titan that was... it was a oh. different yeah Oh, yeah. They just called it, they just referred to it as the garden. I don't remember yeah. what, if they ever gave it, it an actual... It that's was, what I was asking about. It was, it was about, like Titan 2, you know, if sorry, it was going to be the comic books or something. It was going to be like Titan 2. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Sh- okay. Anyway, it yeah. doesn't matter. I gave you misinformation. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You gave her the fake news. Because <laughs> um, I felt like it was a little stupid. And, you know, if you need to go pee in the first five minutes of the movie, this is your time. <laughs> because... What was the point of that? Like, there was zero point. Revenge. Yeah. Yeah, no, okay. Ab- absolutely. Revenge, I get, but it wasn't really revenge. He wasn't really even fighting back. It was just like... Well, it. I think I think the big part of it, they also paid a lot of it where it was like, okay, well, why didn't they just cut Thanos' hand off? Or why didn't they just go for the head? They solved a lot of those post Infinity War script issues in those first five minutes. Like that's that's where I saw it as a, as a band, and I, I but I totally get your your total scene. If you need to go and you're late to the movie, you're not going to miss mm-hmm. much overall from the movie. Yeah, I just felt like um, it was just like 
this weird add-on that added a lot of time to the movie that was really unnecessary. I don't know. I, I, don't, I felt it was kind of out of place in some ways. Hmm. But anyways, that's pretty much my thoughts. Yeah. So whoever's next. Well, <clears throat> if you're number two, then I'm number three and I'm taking the mic back. That's how marriage works for all the single people out in the audience it's, right now. It's not, though. But I mean, taking turns, <laughs> yes. But um, yeah. here I am with my notes. Mm, yes. Um, so, uh, I'll, uh, first of all, uh, I'm sorry I gave you um, misinformation, um, honey. I meant to. Uh, I, uh, what I thought you were asking was where they faced off uh, Thanos at the end of Infinity War. I, I thought that's what you were asking, and of course I jumped to conclusions and thought you were talking about Infinity War and not the beginning of Endgame. We're supposed to be talking about Endgame, honey. Yeah. Well, I'm an idiot, so that's that That, that was your first uh, mistake, was uh, you know yeah. thinking that I could give you valid, <laughs> uh, accurate information. <laughs> um, <laughs> so overall, uh, I really, I really enjoyed <laughs> I really enjoyed the movie. I thought it. I thought it was great. Um, if we're if we're gonna give it stars, we we haven't really done any star ratings. But uh, I don't know. I I probably do. I probably do like four. How many? Four point two five out of five. A couple things that I did like. Uh, I liked the. Um, I like how they chose uh, Tony slash Iron Man to be the <clears throat> the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, as far as he wasn't how, the ultimate. Okay, to bring Co ultimate maybe to bring the entire <laughs> okay the person to actually end Thanos and his cronies can can we put it can we agree on that vernacular? There had to be like no. I I totally I totally agree with you. Okay, the dude at the end who snaps his fingers with the gauntlet and kills Thanos. Okay, well, I can agree on that. I that I. <laughs> I went into this with so factual. much positivity. <laughs> How's that free flowing idea working out for you there, David? It, it's not growing great. What did I tell you? Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm doing great. Anyways, so yeah, keep it up. I keep it up. I, uh, I really enjoyed that. Um, I liked <clears throat> the fact that uh, Steve slash Captain uh, uh, Captain America got to go back in the past and live the life that he wanted with Peggy. I thought that was really cool. I know a lot of people had problems with. Uh, hey, this is the uninterrupted time. Which is why I'm raising my hand. Oh my god. So we'll just make a note that <laughs> later in the podcast we'll talk about this again. Yeah, do you have a problem with that, Miss Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Yes, I do, because um, Peggy Carter was awesome in her own right. She didn't need Steve. Like, what, what, what the fuck was he doing messing up her life? But she I'm not, didn't... I'm, she, I'm not trying. The show, I'm not trying anybody. to say that that she needed Steve. I'm just trying to say that I'm I'm glad from from this perspective, you know, that he wanted to go and live the life that he always dreamed of of getting to marry her and and grow old together. And I'm glad that he got to do that. And maybe we can, you know, since time travel is a part of this, we can pretend like there's alternate storylines. I did have a couple of problems. Um, one was, um, uh, uh, honey, I'm with you as far as the, the soul stone. I wish there was a way that it could have been obtained without having her sacrificed because my thoughts going in was, you know, hey, knowing that she's going to have a movie or supposedly going to have a solo flick, uh, I was hoping that it wasn't going to be like a prequel type situation uh, that uh, didn't account for her death. But anyways, um, I wasn't the hugest fan of that, but I could understand that, you know, it, I mean, there had to be some stakes established. Like mm -hmm. we couldn't, we knew that a lot of people were coming back uh, from the snap. We, we knew that. So we already had this, illusion that like okay are, are, are stakes really a thing in these movies like are, are we actually going to see people die for real and so that 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 one kind of was like yeah like 
there are stakes. People are going to die. And especially when they all come back with the stones and they're like, okay, well, we succeeded. But, you know, this was our cost. Mm -hmm. You know, we uh, the same thing that Thanos had to go through with having to throw Gamora over the edge. Uh, you know, they're all having to deal with this thing where, you know, we needed all the stones. Um, and, and yeah, we lost one person and that fucking sucks. So um, it, it's it, it was interesting to see all of them deal with that. Yeah. But um, so I, I do understand that it was it was kind of a, a necessary evil, if you will. One thing that I did not like right off the bat that I've, I've kind of come around to and I haven't seen a whole lot of people on my side of this. I didn't like Fat Thor. So here's the thing. I I thought at first it was like it was just another joke like them trying to um just the the just Kevin Feige and the Russo brothers just trying to like insert as many jokes as humanly possible to try and offset the seriousness of Infinity War and everything that uh, is going to happen in Endgame. And the more I thought about it and the more that I, uh, I, I've i read, you know, uh, differing opinions on the interweb is it seems like that's not really the case. It, it seems like it's more of a a manifestation of of his uh, of his grieving process. And um I mean, uh, but like I said, I, I wasn't a huge fan of it when, when I was watching it. And keep in mind, I have only seen it once, but when I was watching it, it just, it, it came off as like a bad joke. So I was also a little disappointed with the underutilization of Captain Marvel. I thought that she would be a bigger part and I was, I was hoping she would be a bigger part and part of the time heist. That's what I was really hoping for. It turned out that she wasn't. I. I mean, I did like her dramatic entrance at the final a fight scene mm-hmm. at the end yeah. of her just fucking destroying Thanos's ship. Uh, like, so do you think? And I, I know we're not interrupting. Sorry, but no, it's you, it. We're way past that. Though. <laughs> do you think that? Part of me wonders. Like, do you think that they're like, hey, you know what? She's so powerful. What do we do with her? Oh, let's just make her be absent. You know. A quarter, yeah, half, yeah. a little over half of the movie. And, and I know she did just get her own movie. That could be, you know, an argument to be made where, like, if they put her in for the whole thing, then it could just be, it could be a, an hour and a half film it's instead of... Uh, she shows up, she punches him in the dick until he explodes well, and she walks right. off. Well, and that's, yeah. that's the thing, is in the movie she does that and she gets beat with Thanos. Sexist. Thanos <laughs> in the gauntlet. Like, she gets, she gets hit and she gets knocked down. Anyways, so I like the time travel <laughs> sequence. Uh, my MVP was also the fucking rat. Uh, hats off to the rat. Um, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, Jeff, you were number four. Yeah. Go ahead, buddy. So I want to shout out for... I want to give a obligatory shout out to the rat, which I honestly think was Master Splinter. <laughs> I mean... And was a gigantic crossover. There was just... That's where it was happening. I. They're actually busy crossing over with Batman, so they can't be... No, true statement. They are owned by Warner Brothers and, and going for that. So that's my little thing of... It's one of the few things Disney doesn't own. Yes. Give them time. Give them, give them time. <laughs> right. Give me time and I will own it all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was all kind of terrifying. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha uh, Just keep it up. We actually... Another friend of mine who actually had the common sense and good decency to not be on this podcast because he has self-respect. <laughs> we actually Thanks, have Ted. A, we actually have a... Oh, we have a running theory that uh, there's like, you know, there's like the CIA black sites, mm. like Guantanamo and stuff. Well, Guantanamo is not a black site anymore, but you know, like stuff like that. We, we have this running theory that Disney has the same thing and that somebody's going to give the next Avengers movie or the next Marvel movie a bad review and they're just going to disappear. They're going to have a bunch of people with like, mouse ears show up to their house in the middle <laughs> of the night and just take them out. Like full on Stalinite, Stalinista shit. Right. Who do you think owns the men in black? It's not universal. <laughs> I don't know. Will Smith. <laughs> All right. Um, That's racist. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? That's racist. Ding. All right. Shout out to Cinema Sins. Anyway, so my uh, few kind of overall sweeping things on the film. I love the film. thought it was fantastic. One of my best things, or one of the biggest things that I enjoyed about the film the most was the overall capping off of the character arcs. 
uh, was being able to watch where Tony was at his beginning. And his beginning was, even as Iron Man, I am Iron Man. And started off with this, I mm-hmm. am this person. I am selfish. There's no other mission but this. There's no other goal but my own. Everything else must be must succumb to my will because I am Iron Man. Hear me blast. Right. When at the very end of Endgame, it was, look, I'm going to snap my fingers and I know that I'm going to die. And he sacrifices himself not only for, hey, I'm for the greater good, but he takes a full 180 character mark. It took... Tw- it took that long for his arc to complete. It was awesome. So I'm gonna, I, I just no. want to uh, I, I jump in there. So yeah. I, I'm wholeheartedly with you. Mm-hmm. I loved that entire piece. And, you know, his transformation throughout all of these movies and, you know, these 10 years, right? Yeah. Now, my question, though, is in the first Avengers, <clears throat> uh, Steve makes the comment mm-hmm. about Tony, you're not the one to jump on the grenade yes. or clip the yes. wire or whatever it yeah, may you're not you're not the one to do that and but then, then he does it but then he, he he does it then with that nuke that's being fired right yes so he's showing that he he will sacrifice himself because he went up there he th- you know flew the nuke into space well he told Jarvis it, I don't put everything care, just... into it, it's a one way flight yeah and, and like I said again I'm not I thoroughly loved this entire journey but I wonder how if there would have been any different, any more of an impact or any anything different if he had not done that then and then seeing the ultimate sacrifice here. Yeah, well, he was, when he did the sacrifice in New York mm-hmm. and he made that play and he fell back through the portal Yep. and came back, he came back as, just like Cap said in Avengers, that was a, a self-contained thing that still had larger impacts. Mm-hmm. But it was like, okay, here's the, you know, you're not the one to fall on the grenade. Yep. But if you fall on a grenade with body armor, theoretically, you could yep. survive. Theoretically, as we saw in Avengers, he could survive, and he clearly yep. did. My big thing is, okay, yeah, he survived, but then he also survived, as we saw in Iron Man 3, as somebody struggling with PTSD. Mm-hmm. And... We see that in several parts, and that kid who was in, who was in game, end game at the Hardly. funeral, and that right, that nobody knew. No, everybody yep. was like, "Yep, that was the one thing everyone that had to go home totally and tweet about." Totally over my head. It, I was like, "Who the fuck is this?" And then this like one kid standing by himself, like what? And we're Lincoln. Who who is that guy? And then everybody's like, "Oh no, that's Harley." Just all grown up. Everybody went to the internet. I needed him holding a sign. Hey, remember me from Iron Man right, Three? Right, right. Like that—that's what I needed. I'm he would have—he would have shown up. It had this been in the comic book version, it mm-hmm. would have shown up with him as an asterisk in a yellow print. Yep. Like, please see Iron Man Three, <laughs> issue number forty-five. Like, yep. it would have been in that part. But the fact that we came that way with all of Tony was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the way that we came the whole way with Captain America was great. Mm-hmm. I liked, and I, I'm a huge fan of Marvel TV, so I love Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I can't wait for the new season. I also love um, Agent Carter. I thought that was great. I loved how they referenced Agent Carter in Endgame. With Jarvis? And, well, also with Jarvis. Okay. But then they also referenced where she was at the end of Agent Carter, okay, which yeah. was being director of S.H.I.E.L.D. And that she was director of S.H.I.E.L.D. in Endgame. Now, so getting into probably what will end up being a much, maybe a much larger discussion, I don't know. Yeah. So seeing how it, your thoughts on Agent Carter and how Steve going back in time what may or may not affect that. Well, if, if according <laughs> according to their time rules, it won't affect that because anything that they change is making like alternate timelines and alternate yes. realities, alternate so that, offshoots of. The that's original. a whole discussion that I have notes for. Of that's yeah, it's like that they're exists. like it's like Dragon Ball 
uh, one of the YouTube channels that I that I saw, I think it was uh, Emergency Awesome, was the fact it was they're like, okay, yeah, so it's basically Dragon Ball Z rules. Yeah. So it's not gonna suddenly transport now, people out or transport as they grab the so stones. So it's not gonna out affect of like the future and the timeline that they're in. But I'm just saying, like, you know, for all their oh, let's have an awesome girl moment, but mm-hmm. yet, you know, I think they should have focused more on being like, look at this awesomeness. Look, Peggy Carter's head of shield. That's awesome. So, Rather than being like, oh, look, Peggy Carter really missed Steve Rogers and she wanted him and now she's got him. But well, well they did, can't, we but they we can't ignore that either. Yeah. Like that's been so established. Now, I mean, but the other thing with that though, so I've seen two different interviews, one with the Russo brothers and then the others with the, was it McFreely and yeah. the writers. And both of them, like those two groups say two different things. The Russo brothers saying that, oh, yeah, well, when Steve went back and he stayed there, that created alternate timeline, which then opens up the whole discussion of, all right, so if he is living in this alternate timeline, how did he get back here? Exactly. Into original. His suit. <laughs> so, and, and then it opens up all these things with the shield and all that stuff. Where where did the shield come from? Who did, you know, blah, blah, blah. The, the writers are like, no, that's that's BS. He was in the, the original timeline as, an, you know, growing old with Peggy. But if that's the case, like, where does that, for me, like, the whole thing with, with Steve through his entire arc has been, he is this moral compass yep. that no matter what, what he believes is right has to be done. So, so how can then, he, in that case, then there was, like, two Steve Rogers running around through a for good... For a portion for, for of a, that, right? Right, and we kind of we kind of get that a little bit, uh, either during the film and during the comics as well, where it kind of goes out where it's... Captain America doesn't go into ice for a long time in the comics. And then he comes back in the 40s and the 60s where he kind of becomes Captain America again. So you kind of get a little Captain America and you could honestly have, I don't think they're going to, but if uh, Chris Evans wanted to make another film, they could totally make one with him going through Vietnam and him going through uh, Korea so in and the kicking butt, taking names, but I don't think that'll happen. But one of the biggest things that I did enjoy about it is if you look, what was it in um, Winter Soldier mm-hmm. when he got the chance to finally go back and pe- hang out with Peggy? Peggy's like, Look, I've lived a great life, I have a husband, we have kids. You know, she got to live her life. We didn't see who the husband, who the husband was. was, but if we so if, if we and it's not the person from Age, from Peggy, from Agent Carter. It's not him, which is what we thought at the beginning, because it would make more sense if you go back in Endgame that her husband would actually be Steve Rogers. Their kids, or their grandkids, would later on be either part of the New Avengers or Next Avengers, which then could lead into the time traveling villain himself. Jeremiah, you know where I'm going with this. Please say his name. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not going to acknowledge it. I'm totally oh lost. Who? who what, so, what the hell are we talking about? There's, there's, we... there's a, there's a time traveling villain that comes back after the Avengers kids, because their Avengers kids and their counterparts mess up the timeline even further. And they've referenced him in the comics that have come out since then. They've referenced him in Marvel. Uh, and the Disney cartoon series, which are honestly enough help to introduce a lot of the characters and storylines before like years beforehand. So the kids who are growing up and know this can know those characters. Uh, and one of the biggest guys that comes up, he comes back and I think one version of the comics had him as actually like Tony Stark from like from the future or something. I but it wasn't. So, yeah. It was Kang the Conqueror, is his name. Okay. So the time traveling villain himself, Kang the Conqueror, who has futuristic tech that outweighs Ultron, makes Ultron look like a microwave. Just you think it, you write it, it's going to magically just happen. And Kang comes in and becomes this 
fantastic thing. That would might be another direction that they might take the movies coming up to Phase 4, which we'll probably get into in a bit. Yep. Um, but to be able to see one of those, one of the things I liked about the film is to see those Easter eggs. I think there's close to 250 different Easter eggs within this single film. <laughs> and we're like, okay, one, you're closing up the plot lines for a lot of different ones. You're closing up what could be where. And then you're closing up and kind of evolving towards the next part where I think, I personally think they're going, is I personally think they're going towards Secret Wars. Mm-hmm. With all of the different timelines, with even the explainer video within the movie, courtesy of the Ancient One, being off on like, okay, look, here's the thing, here's the alternate. She literally did the Doc Brown. Mm-hmm. She pulled the Doc Brown out right. on Professor Hulk and was like, hey, here's the thing. And was like, this is leads off to everything. So the whole Secret Wars aspect that we even got an Easter egg with the t- two Captain Americas fighting each other. Which was awesome. Mm-hmm. America's ass. And, you know, and then you get the call back to Hail Hydra. Yep. Where he's like, he whispers that. And the, I got that reference. Uh, you know, you get that, right? It's fantastic. And yeah. It's that that aspect where it's not just paying off service for the fans. It is <laughs> also paying off service for fans of not just the movies, but of the comics as well. Mm-hmm. The Hail Hydra has clear efforts where, where they had a huge press thing where, oh, now Captain America's Hydra agent. Mm-hmm. When he wasn't, but that was just marketing for his character. Everything has been thought out. Everything has been calculated within this gigantic movie machine that is Marvel and Disney. Mm-hmm. It's nuts to, to, to go through and think about. Um, one of the other things I enjoyed about the, the film was the pacing. The pacing was really, really good. Um, I think the one part you probably could go to the bathroom and see is probably when the San Francisco slate comes up. It's if you don't care about Ant-Man and the rat. <laughs> Shout MVP. out to Matt. The MVP for... And my MVP is... I'm going to put it based off of Infinity War and Endgame together because I view both of these movies much like uh, a better, better version of Kill Bill. Where I'm not <laughs> here. You love Mike Gribble. You're done. Fucking done. with the wrong one, man. You're Jesus no. God. <laughs> no, no, no. So hear me out. Hear me out. So not only do you have the two part split mm-hmm. at a very basic elemental level of for for the Kill Bill analogy, but you, it's it does it better because of the pacing, the pacing and the character development and the writing is better because you don't have long characters making gigantic monologues throughout the entire film and you're going okay like I watched Kill Bill Volume 1 and I go is this over yet? and at the end of Infinity War I go Holy crap, everyone died. Okay, well, first of all, we're not going to have this conversation no. about uh, Kill Bill right now because I cannot even... Uh, Tarantino. We'll, Sorry, we'll just, dude, yeah, talk too much. We'll, uh, we'll just, we'll just so, kind of table that for okay. another time. We can, we Maybe can table when that. we hit stop. Because <laughs> then we're going to hit Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Often and in a lot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I might need a lift home. Um, no, I. I mean, that is something that we can we can kind of talk about uh, as far as the, um, you know, being uh, split into sure. uh, two parts. Uh, I mean, I. I guess we could go in a couple different directions. I thought the I thought the pacing of Infinity War was a little bit better. I uh, the the timing or the the overall runtime for that movie seemed to be seemed to go by a lot quicker. Even though it was kind of like bloom and doom, she just gave me a note that says I think Kill Bill uh, was a terrible movie. So, and I fist bumped. Yeah, some, well, her awesome. opinion. Oh, I read count. that wrong. I read feminine movie. The yeah. terrible. Okay, yeah, sorry. It was, it was also a very feminine movie I, too. I was just like, well, yeah, I mean, it, main it, character. Yeah. Um, 
I agree with you, though, David. This is just going completely <laughs> off the rails. Jeremiah, this is not actually how this thing goes uh, most of the time. Uh, it, it, there, there's I thought you have five people. <sighs> yeah, usually there aren't this many people sitting at the table, uh, and, and we're not passing around microphones. Um, and most of the time, your guests have better opinions. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that because I've been on this a few times, and my opinions this, are... <laughs> Unassailable. Right. The, this this is kind of a, 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 a kind of a a black cat type of uh, type of episode where there there's people here that haven't seen the movie but have strong opinions about the MCU and uh, but are diehard comic book fans. So and if Sony has their way, we'll have that movie too. What movie? Black Cat. Oh, okay. We'll have Black Cat, so yeah. Love well, that you, wasn't really a reference. That was just... I know. Like, it just made me think. <laughs> that, um, that was just a terrible metaphor. It was. So anyway, uh, moving on. The MVP that I have, I viewing them both as that, is for me, Doctor Strange. Uh, I see that only as... <laughs> here's, here's the reason why. Without Doctor Strange, A, the plan wouldn't have been formulated. Doc... Doctor Strange, when he sat, he had to sacrifice the Time Stone in order for all of these fourteen thousand become this gigantic different scenarios. A, then B. At the end of the movie, he at um, Tony asks Strange, "Is this the one?" He says, "I can't tell you because if I do, it'll ruin it." Well, you won't do what it, he's doing. You won't do. Yeah. And then he gave him the one finger mm -hmm. that this was the one, which then prompted Tony to make his, to grab for the gauntlet, have the nanobots in his suit, which you can hear. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if you caught this on the second yep. viewing, but you hear Tony's suit moving, mm -hmm. snatching the stones and making his own infinity gauntlet on his on the opposite hand the mirror opposite hand of Thanos and then he's able to snap knowing the fact it would kill him because it crippled the hulk and the hulk had it the hulk was the strongest avenger who could have worn it and still somewhat survived tony grabbed the stones formed his own gauntlet just by having the stones at a pure necessity and did that all and gave his life completing his arc at the inspiration of Doctor Strange after he was given this is the one. I feel like so yeah, I feel like the Tony questioning earlier had to happen. Yes, it did. Um, because unless you're unless you're watching Infinity War and Endgame you know together Mm -hmm. You know, you may not remember that, oh, out of however many million instances that Doctor Strange viewed, yeah. there was one where they won. And he only told that detail to Tony. Yeah. He only told that to Tony, and he even mentioned the line, we're in the end game now. And that was our, as fans, we poured over that detail of that is going to be the title of the next movie. Mm-hmm. And the Russo brothers trolled everybody for so long. And then when it was finally the end game and Kevin Feige came out, I was like, no, that was always going to be the title. And then do you have that important part of, yes, that's why that's the title. Because you view it as one gigantic saga, mm -hmm. one gigantic story where all of these other characters have their arc. Black Widow had her arc. Um, and she died as her character saw fit her memorial service I'm not going to call it a funeral because it didn't have a casket but she had a memorial service there and with all of her closest friends and all the people who really knew her as the other Avengers that fit her character um, Tony had a gigantic funeral which pulled everybody in who's ever been in a movie before same thing happened with the final fight scene and Wong is like, you want more people? Um, so that was that was awesome. Also, Wong could also be an honorable mention for the MVP because he, he's the one that 
brought everybody mm-hmm. and made all the sling rings for everybody mm-hmm. or made or at least mentioned it out to the people like hey you're going to need sling rings for this for this one part here's how you do it so mm-hmm. you know Wakanda and all over the rest of the world after everybody was unsnapped but the fact one of the things that I didn't like about the movie uh, when this is very very few was when Hulk snapped I didn't try- think his fingers were going to touch in that glove right but they his did his fingers looked so short and stubby just they were they were sausages <laughs> they were sausage fingers I thought yeah. Secret Life of Pets was going to come out and we were going to have another sausage thing <laughs> What? That's only because I have two girls and where they're watching uh-huh. that movie like crazy right now. Yep. Um, and you'd have to, if you haven't seen the movie, you'd have to see it. You'd have to see the movie yeah, for that I sausage that reference. reference. It. And Ted's leaving. No. <laughs> That's where he draws the line. That's where he draws like the pets. line. Sausages. Daddy, Teddy, would you like some sausage? Um, no. Nope. I'm not starting that either. <laughs> but comes out and when he when he snaps, not only does he try to bring Natasha back. Mm-hmm. And the fact that that is permanent, because if you were to get Natasha back, you'd have to have the Soul Stone back. He also, when he brings back everybody, there's not an immediate huge number of everybody coming back. It's animals. And then it's immediate. Yep. Like, what was that? Battle sick. I feel, like that that, I, I, I feel like that. I feel like that's going to be the Avengers compound blowing the, the shit. The Avengers compound absolutely being destroyed. Going back to to Natasha. Sure. So she sacrifices herself. Emotional moment, like her and and Clint go back and forth of who's going to do it, right? So, which I thought was awesome, by the way. I, I did too. That added more weight. to Right. That. Um, now, so she sacrificed herself, and they they drive home the fact like. It's a change that cannot be undone. Mm-hmm. Now, getting into what we'll probably discuss much further, uh, you know, next, where does the MCU go from here? It is a comic book movie, and no one's really dead in well, a comic book movie. But I mean, at the same time, like we've already seen, so Gamora was present. Yeah. Right? So, because she was from pre being sacrificed. So, at what point in, you know, phase four or, you know, in the Black Widow movie that. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they've said is going to happen. Do they go back and make and grab and the teenage to, version of of Black Widow, of Natasha, you know, make her a Shield agent instead of yeah, KGB? I mean, something you know. Do you think that they'll that they'll do that, or do they keep that emotional resonance that her sacrificing herself had? Yeah. And Black Widow movie is a prequel. I think it definitely opens up a lot of possibilities for what yeah. it could be sure. and numerous directions which kind of play in their favor because after a while these movies can get kind of predictable mm-hmm. and that I, I mean it, it's it's not you know necessarily like 100% their fault it, it's just a, a consequence of these kinds of movies yeah. so you want to kind of strategically have these storylines you know playing the long game and that that's where you know something like this comes in handy you know where you have you know people die off but you know they're they're kind of coming back in the future but you know is it going to be a prequel you don't know so now one of the things that i'm wondering is phase four they've you know they've said that phase four the the mcu will look very different you know so does that mean you know phase four and beyond we're not going to have as interconnected and intertwined Mm -hmm. you know stories obviously referencing each other is 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 uh a given like they they will do that but do they have this you know 20 plus film arc that you know is done again and that's that's where i was thinking about secret wars is they've got a big bad or a big event they always have big events Mm -hmm. that's the way the marvel method is yes you have um and i learned this from dan slott writer spider he wrote spider-man for a number of years he's the guy that killed spider-man in the 616 Mm -hmm. and he was like okay there's a method to the madness is everything happens in events but in these big events there's a bigger event which happens on 
So I stayed away from social media, from anything and everything that could potentially give me spoilers Mm -hmm. Sure. for a good portion leading up to the movie. But, you know, in when Infinity War was coming out and then obviously, you know, the the discussions after that and then also the, you know, the news of uh, Disney buying Fox. Yep. You know, all of the people that were like, oh, you know what the end credit scene is going to be? Then panning out from Earth and Galactus is there. Like, I would love to see the people that wanted that to happen. Right. <laughs> I, I, I admit, I, admit I, I wanted some reference to the Fantastic Four or, you know, I mean, Kevin Figge said many times leading up to Endgame, like, X-Men are not going to be in the MCU anytime soon. Right. Yeah, they like, had to wait. They have to wait a certain amount of time. Yeah, for for things due to legal reasons. Yeah, so it's a, like talk about real world stakes and the fact that they have to recast everybody. Yeah, they have to really start from scratch for this next. But at the same time, like the the power of Disney, we don't if, have all the legal fees. If no, 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 I'm not saying from that standpoint. I'm just saying. It, so let's let's talk about the casting piece, right? So sure, if they really wanted to. Like, oh, we're going to throw in, you know, an end credit scene that's, you know, phase four is going to introduce the Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. They could get that casted. Well, even even if they had an end credit scene where they had it, where it was just signing over, where Reed Richards was signing over, and then you have somebody else. Mm-hmm. A, 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 a new person being like, hey, here's the the deed to Avengers Tower becoming the new Baxter building. Yeah. And they are signing it off and you see the R. Just the, R. Yeah. But they, I don't think, could even do that legally. Oh, okay. Because by the time the deal was inked and it was dry, the, I think there's a stipulation in the deal where they can't touch him for so many mm-hmm. amount of time. Yeah. So, so going into some of the, the time travel stuff that I wanted to... Mm-hmm get a discussion on so we, we've touched we've touched on the bulk of it already yeah right. and so you know one of the main things is obviously the uh alternate timeline versus original piece and and just to kind of call back to that for a quick second so captain america going back in time whether or not that creates an alternate timeline or he's in the original timeline and everything is the same for captain america if, he, if he's in an original timeline for him morally, how could he stay out of Hydra infiltrating Shield? Stay out of even getting into what we know as the the MCU universe. So the you know the events of the Battle of New York, so forth and so on that we've already seen. Like how he wouldn't be able to stay away from that. I don't feel like so if he's in an original timeline. If he's if he's still in that original timeline, right? And he, because it still branches off, right? When he goes back in time and faces Bucky, mm-hmm. or face not Bucky, but faces him himself again, mm-hmm. and he says Bucky is alive, and that totally wrecks 2014 Steve Rogers. But so the the time travel logic though, right? If you're anything, not gonna have any effects, you know, you can't meet your your you, past you self. Can, you're not you're right. You're not gonna right. But they're using Dragon Ball Z rules, so it's anything that happens, whatever happens in this timeline, it's just gonna branch off a new one, still Back to the Future. But even they still begrudgingly mention that Back to the Future was a pile of poop. <laughs> yep. Uh, it still wasn't anything. Like they mistakenly did that, mm-hmm. I think, because it was like, "Hey, you still have this timeline. This is everything going on." So, so we and have alternate timelines. They have alternate timelines unless they fixed the timelines, which is but what they were supposed to be doing at the end, right? That's why he went back in time. He went back in time to fix there. everything, and stayed. He stayed there after he did everything. So after he fixed and returned the stones where they exactly were to be. And if they were, then for a brief second of time, Molnir didn't show up. Mm-hmm. Or earlier, when she didn't have it, you know, now Dr. Foster got the serum. When the exact moment of right. Banner showing up and two seconds later, 
it shows up with the time stone to the ancient one. Mm-hmm. You know, those types of things. I think he did all of this, and then afterwards it comes back to where he's like, because if he went back to that exact same moment, then the, he wouldn't have had the dual fight with Steve Rogers. He wouldn't have had to. He wouldn't have gotten on the elevator with and said hail Hydra, and stayed out. He would have been okay, cool, but he also would have known that all of that has to take place in order for everything else to go. So your present becomes them. your past. Your present and becomes, your past your, becomes past. your future, but so yeah, it's almost like it's Futurama a, too. But it's 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 just a weird, uh, you know, it gets into so many tangents, and so the yeah. the question being though, so obviously, if he's in an alternate timeline, how does he end up back there as an old man? That was my question. Other and than with like, his shield. The script. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Because um, they wanted it to be that way. They wanted it to be that way. You have old man, old man Cap. Yeah, the mm-hmm. happy ending tested better with audiences. And <laughs> rather than some confusing, uh, you know, alternate, alternate, alternate storyline. Rather than Adam Warlock not testing well with audiences at this mm-hmm. point. Because audiences are a shitty tape. That's why we got twenty-two million movies. That print money. <laughs> Again, that doesn't they redeem mar- my point. <laughs> no, it just mutes it. No, it in fact makes my point. Um, uh, so, so, so in this is not necessarily time travel related, but time related. So, end of the movie, Peter's back. Mm-hmm. So get it. Let's let's yep. get into the uh, if we can, the people that were snapped. Right. They yes. were dusted. Yeah. So Peter's back. Yep. Uh, at the end of the movie, we see him going into what is presumably high school. Yes. Mm-hmm. Looking around, he sees Ned. Yep. And they're both really happy to see each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's five years later. So we, by that, we have to assume that Ned was dusted Ned as well. Ned was also dusted. That came out. The Russo brothers were like, hey, he was also which dusted. It, which and is an everybody else that was in Marvel Cinematic that was going to be in Homecoming is also dusted. So that's, a, so that's what I'm interested to see is, is that referenced in Far From Home? I'm assuming so. I'm assuming it'll be... Maybe haphazardly thing, maybe like a throwaway character was like, "Hey, weren't you like the little kid down the street just like two <laughs> seconds ago?" Yeah, but then the snapping happened, and you know, I grew up, and you guys came back suddenly. So, oh, yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, I'm assuming I'm, that uh, uh, at least part of um, Far From Home is going to serve as kind of cleaning up some questions that yeah. that yeah. a lot of people have. I with, mean, it, it, it's it's one of those things game. that. For for me, like my initial thought is going into that is if that's a case, like oh well, all of you know that core group that you know was in Homecoming as your main teenage characters and is mm-hmm. going to be in Far From Home, like oh, it's so convenient that they were all they were all snapped. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's just it's not even convenient. That's just preparation. That's just finishing out. It's like okay, cool now. To they me, could it's an have easy written. write-off. It, it, it is is a very easy write-off, and you have a lot of other issues that are, you're dealing with. So, mm-hmm. as a writer, I see that, and I'm going, like, yeah, I, I I get that. I get mm-hmm. the reason why you went with that. Yeah. Because it's easy, and you can, if you still need all of these characters to be to return based off of contracts, then, yeah, no, they were all snapped too. And that, and that, that's probably one of my only gripes like real true gripes is you know we we talk about how and we we talked about uh, pretty heavily here is you know here's these 20 plus movies that have been so interconnected and thought out which for the most part like i would agree yes they have definitely been thought out but there have been those moments throughout this infinity saga Mm -hmm. where it's like "Mm, you you weren't thinking about you know, down the road when the, you did this, there, there's those the little date, things. The dates lapse, like for example, within the the two Spider Man. That's things. one of them. Yeah, yeah. and, and there, there's there's little things like that that the continuity it just kind of takes yeah. you out of out of the experience, a little right? Bit. And so I, I feel like Far From Home has a little bit of that going into it, where I'm like, eh. my my thing is like you see from the trailers and the trailers from uh, Endgame were anything but this Mm -hmm. because they were mostly fake within but save for like a two or three shots you had mostly unused footage end up in the trailers to help keep it secret 
other yeah. than like two or three different shots. Mm-hmm. And they, they made the comment to ahead of time. They're like, oh, what's in the trailers is from the first 20 minutes, which is partially true. Partially, there were some things that not, there were some things that were from later in the movie, but didn't give any sort didn't of give context any, away. Right. Um, the scene of, um, of uh, Black Widow firing, firing her gun in like the gun range part yeah. of mm-hmm. uh, Avengers compound was not in the movie. Yeah. No, uh, it was. No, it wasn't. It was in the movie where, because she was going back. Wasn't it in the movie on the second mm. time? It wasn't in the movie. No. I what? thought it was. Because mm. I was very much looking forward to that point. Because, I mean. She gets grand- some, like emotional and. I mean, granted, yes. I mean, she's, you know, secret assassin and that's pretty much what she brings to the table. But you, you, ha- you also have, a, I think, a reveal. One of the things I think that surprised me the most was you have a very human reaction of the stress of, hey, this is what we need to cover. Mm-hmm. Um, from from Scarlett Johansson. One, you get that. What, what are you talking about? Co- covering so, what? So, okay. When she becomes almost like the leader of everybody else who's unsnapped, Mm-hmm. Yep. Or who's not been snapped yet? Oh, I was happy. Okay. To, I was actually happy to see that. Like, yeah, to you, see her step into that. She steps into that leader yeah. role, mm-hmm. but then you have all these other people where they're at, going, "Okay, what's this?" You have an earthquake underneath the ocean, which some people have taken to hint at Namor. for Namor. Yeah. Where it's like <laughs> <laughs> Namor. Uh, I think personally, with me, Aquaman kind of beats. Namor, just from the story aspects, and but Namor's side is like really underdeveloped and underutilized. So it would be interesting to have a Namor film. I I wondered when when she, when they mentioned that I was like, oh, are they gonna? They've already mentioned they... him twice in the in the cinematic universe. Yeah, first time was in Iron Man three. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a dot, little throwaway in the middle of the yeah. Atlantic, and then an underwater eruption or an underwater thing yeah i was just like you handle it by not handling it it was like okay well that's pretty much namor's main thing is don't handle anything yeah. we're gonna do it now he might come to pass and be like oh i came up because we had half of our people die and then suddenly come back up uh, and i feel like that's kind of a tricky thing moving forward now because they've had such you know they've had this universe that is so interconnected that as you start introducing characters, if you establish that they've oh, I've been around for a while, well, where the hell were you when we were fighting this guy that dusted everybody? Right. You the whole war machine line, yeah. We're all and, about that superhero life. Yeah, and so I feel like that's another thing that I, I'm wondering if, you know, phase four and moving forward, that we do not have such intertwined things because of that. And also... And, and this can either we can we can discuss that if you want, but leading into this MCU versus the TV series, the TV shows, multiple, and how those yeah. are connected or not connected. I, I really wish <laughs> Joseph Loeb and Kevin Feige, or kind of going back, Jeff Loeb, excuse me, um, Jeff Loeb and Kevin Joseph Feige brother. would like. <laughs> get back together uh-huh. and just squash it. I think the fact of being under Disney plus now with a lot of the new stuff, if that'll is, if that'll help because well, I mean, so the, we the new that... shows are, they have said this mm-hmm. because of the thing, the Falcon and winter soldier show. Yep. Loki is going to be that Loki is going to be in it, mm-hmm. uh, are going to be part of it. And then WandaVision yeah. is going to be part of that. Which is big, such a... It's such a weird name. Yeah. It sounds like a 50s TV show. Hey. Hello, and thank you for welcoming to WandaVision. Yeah, it's so... Now brought to you in Technicolor. I mean, it's just they... <laughs> I feel like they were in the media and like, all right, what are we going to call these new shows? And like, well, we got Falcon and Winter Soldier. Well, what's the other one with... Uh, and they're like, oh, with Wanda and Vision. So what do we call that? How about Wanda WandaVision? Vision. Now in Technicolor. Now in Pure Lazy... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just yeah. I mean, the show may be great when it comes out, but mm-hmm. and that might not be is... the final title for the show. Yeah, but so uh, so in that regard, like so I've 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 I think I've read 
So Disney Plus will have, you know, these set of shows. Anything that is a bit harder um, will go to Hulu. Yes. So that makes so obviously we have our our Mar- Marvel shows that have been on Netflix, right? So your Daredevil, Jessica Jones. They got Luke canceled. Cage. So they were all canceled. Yes. And, and they're not coming. They're not coming back for at least. Two they years. have to that whole getting back to that whole legal thing, right? Yeah. So they have to let some time pass. But so. You know, those shows did their best to reference the MCU, mm-hmm. but did. not like overtly. Yeah, yeah, they didn't you know, throw away lines and set up the or event or whatever. Like I think in Daredevil, they always just referred to the event, the event, and or they whatever had, it was. Yeah, and they had construction going a lot. Yeah, in Daredevil but, season one after Avengers. You know, so when we get into you know Phase Four and beyond, all these shows that they have how intertwined will the shows actually be? And so going back to like agent Carter and things like that, like, you know, we have to be as referential as we can, but I think some of the things like will happen, like for example, the Nova movie, uh, which has been confirmed that they're working on a Nova movie, that it's going to be coming out. Mm -hmm. Having a Sam Alexander Nova movie makes a lot more sense. Because you have somebody coming out from the destroyed Nova Corps uh-huh. as a huge cinematic event by itself, which we might see in that the very first half of that, and then been giving his his powers to Sam, much akin to the same way as Captain Marvel, mm-hmm. and where they kind of have similar powers but also different, and kind of goes that way. Mm-hmm. So it's. They're going to have to release it later on after Captain Marvel because you don't want it to seem too stagnant. Well, um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Jeremiah, do you have any uh, have any closing thoughts? Um, I Just just what I've, you know, I feel like what I've already said. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. I would highly suggest anyone and everyone, including Ted, going and seeing the movie. Um, I will pay for your ticket, Ted. <laughs> okay, he, good. He, I was a, he, I was a even oh. even if even if you paid for it, he he'd still he'd probably take his ticket and then turn around it. and like go to customer service and be like, "Hey, can I change this <laughs> to something else?" Yeah, I was given this as a gag gift, and it's not that fucking. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's pretty funny. Yeah. I, so regardless of that, I, I would say go see it. Um, I, I feel like if you know if you're not a fan, obviously you know it, it's probably not your thing, but. Still, it it's a movie that I feel has some funny moments, some good action, um, a, a lot of emotion. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and you know, will will be a good three hour chunk of your time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, I like I said, I uh, I'll you know just kind of reiterate some points. I thought overall it was really good. Um, the pacing I thought was relatively. Relatively good. I mean, especially compared to Infinity War. Like I said, I, I thought Infinity War did a little bit better with the pacing. Uh, it, it wasn't that much shorter than Endgame. I mean, it was it was maybe shorter by like 15, and, 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah 15 Infinity minutes War so. was like 245 and this uh, was like 302. Yeah. I, I think the crux of Endgame was the time traveling bit, which is, you know, a, a good chunk and is essential to the whole movie. But there were parts of it that I feel like had a little bit of fat and, and could have been trimmed. But mm-hmm. overall, uh, all things considered, I, I thought that it was still relatively well paced. And I thought that the the big battle scene at the very end, it flew by, you know, very quickly because it was kind of all building up to that. Mm-hmm. And there yeah. was just so much excitement that I felt like it, it just kind of came and went so quickly. And I was right. like, oh, that is it. And, but in all actuality, it was really like the last hour of the movie. Um, and uh, so, but yeah, I, overall, I really enjoyed it. I, I thought it was a great uh, sort of kind of wrap up to phase four. I mean, we're technically not done yet. Um, sorry, phase three, my bad. Um, yeah, uh, so yeah, we of course, we still got Spider-Man. We'll see what, uh, what that does in a couple months. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, um, my thoughts are yeah, uh, four and a quarter stars, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean if I, I would say like Jeremiah, go see the movie, but I don't think that anyone listening to this movie is like contemplating going to see it. They're probably have been there since the beginning. So mm-hmm. yeah, Lindsay, do you have any final thoughts? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> 
No. <laughs> we kind of said she everything. Her decision to be a part of this. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, you got any final uh, closing thoughts? Uh, sure. So I'll echo the last two. Just, you know, go see the film. If it's not your thing, I will say um, it is one of those films that, as far as cinematic history is concerned, if you're a cinephile uh, and you haven't seen any Avengers films, catch up on YouTube, do a recap, and then go see it. Um, I think we're finally getting to the it, we're getting into like um, uh, Game of Thrones territory yeah. and, and like Doctor Who territory where the canon is just so big and the you know the it's been built up too much uh, so if if you're not into it by this point in time it's going to be really difficult to convince someone unless you're a kid uh, and, yeah. and yeah. you can you know start them off you know I've, young or whatever but yeah it, it, I mean it, as an adult going into this if you're not hooked by now then it's going to be very difficult to like talk one of your friends into starting to watch the movies well if you if you see it and you're kind of like look um, go see it it's got you know big explosions big big other stuff if you like that but they're going to be fucking lost if, right well and that's that's why I say you know do a recap mm-hmm. at the very least very very least watch Infinity War or and watch that first and then watch Endgame because then you'll have a better understanding of what's going on. If yep. you do the recap, you'll understand who the characters are, where the points are of the story, where, where for our, you know, does thou mother know if you weareth her drapes? They won't know <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> that part. They won't go that deep a cut, but they'll understand, okay, hey, here's the thing. And then, but you get this gigantic uh, movie-esque kind of event happening where for the first time in cinematic history uh, the correlating franchises have been brought into one to create this huge system that has worked so much to the fact that other studios are copying it mm-hmm. to a point it's ad nauseum yep. Sony's doing it with their spinal with their verse Warner Brothers is doing it with DC trying to they're trying oh my gosh (laughs) they can do it so well within their mindset of animation that's that's a whole different that's a whole different discussion Mm -hmm. and I will probably end up being like Ted for DC because I'm uh, right now just if you need to press F to comment for DC and just to for the fallen fact that they can't get a film off the ground which I, I, I hate, just as an aside, because yeah. for me, from a comic book fan, I like Marvel. M- my favorite, though, is, is Batman. So mm-hmm. give me some good DC movies. Give me a good connected DC movie universe. Maybe maybe, maybe it's coming. We, we, we can stay positive and hopeful. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, and that might be I'll, the next episode of how the DC universe could be fixed. I thought you were going to say of how I met your mother. I was like, wait, what? It's coming back. It's coming Just back. Just to talk about the DC universe. We're going to talk the DC universe and how right. I met your mother on the next episode of possibly maybe in time travel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. I guess that's a, a good point to wrap it up. Um, Lindsay, Jeremiah, Ted, Jeff, thank you so much for being here. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. It's thank been you a good for, time. For having me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we... I'm not going to thank you because I regret the decision. <laughs> you know what, Ted? You can shut the fuck up then. You are the lovely Eeyore. I'm just joking. I love you, buddy. And he's your poo. <laughs> I'm your poo. Hey, what did I say? No, I'm not saying that to really I've always, or, I've always learned Anyways, that if you take one step. I'd love to sign this bitch off oh, if that's possible. <laughs> you or other take to it's go tough. to sign off. <laughs> I gotta do my sign off line. You can <laughs> Hey everyone, be kind, stay geeky, eat lots of cheesecake. Thanks.